Okay, so for this video, we are looking at the responsibilities of an auditor, and that's in section 200.06. And it says, as the basis for the auditor's opinion, um, GAS required the auditor to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to error or fraud. Um, a reasonable assurance is a high but not absolute level of assurance it is obtained when the auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence to reduce audit risk. That is, the risk that the auditor expresses an inappropriate opinion when the financial statements are material misstated to an acceptably low level. Reasonable assurance is not an absolute level of assurance because there are inherent limitations of an audit that result in most of the audit evidence on which the auditor draws conclusions and bases the auditor's opinion being persuasive rather than conclusive. And so they've been uh, pretty specific with their language here, and so let's pick apart um, each of the key phrases in this section. First of all, they say the, um, the responsibilities of the auditor are to obtain reasonable assurance. And so they make it very clear that reasonable assurance is high, um, but certainly not an absolute level of assurance. So we can't say with absolute certainty that the financial statements are free from material misstatements. And that's because there are certain inherent limitations of the audit, and we'll get to those later on. So next we have um, that we're trying to get assurance that the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. And so as a whole, um, we might understand that to meaning, um, do the misstatements that are found in the financial statements, when we combine them all together, does it make the entire financial statements misleading? And uh, we'll see later on um, in these videos the difference of types of opinions that can be made regarding the financial statements as a whole, and uh, it will become more clear there uh, exactly what that means. Uh, but next, free from material misstatement. So a misstatement is defined as the difference between what was reported in the financial statements and what was supposed to be reported as required by the applicable financial reporting framework. And so these misstatements can be um, caused either by fraud or error. And another section of, of the AUC standards describe um, fraud. However, it's important to note here that they don't say that the auditor's responsibility is to find fraud. It's, the, his responsibility is to find misstatements, which could be due to fraud or an error. So very important distinction. So with our understanding of what a misstatement is, um, the auditor has a clear risk that the financial statements are misstated. And what he's trying to do in the audit is to reduce that risk to an acceptably low level. So a risk of material misstatement is the risk that the financial statements are misstated before the audit begins. And the risk can be um, categorized into two buckets. These are the inherent risk and control risk. And so the inherent risk is the risk that an assertion um, within a particular account or disclosure uh, could be misstated just by the nature of that account. And then a control risk would mean that that account or assertion or disclosure is misstated and the company's controls um, are not designed or operated in a way that might detect and correct that misstatement. And so inherent and control risk together comes to the risk of material misstatement. And that's a term that's used mostly throughout the AUC section. And so that description of inherent and control risk um, is at the assertion level of the financial statements. And there's also another level of risk of material misstatement, and that is at the financial statement level. So those will be risks related to um, the, mis the misstatements that could be pervasive across um, all accounts of the financial statements. And maybe an example of that might be a fraud was occurring. It could affect a, a lot of different accounts. So there's two levels to the risk, and that's at the financial statement level and the assertion level. And so AUC Section 315 goes into more detail on how to assess the risk of mis material misstatement. And so once the auditor understands his risks uh, of material misstatement, both at the assertion and the financial statement level, he needs to design um, and perform procedures um, with the goal of being to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to reduce that risk to an acceptably low level. So let's pick apart uh, this sentence as well. And so audit evidence is information obtained by the auditor from the entity or even outside third parties um, that would assist it in substantiating the assertions and, and balances and disclosures in the financial statements. So this could be accounting records um, or even representations made by management. Source documents and uh, letters or confirmations from outside parties. And so they've also made sure to specify sufficient and appropriate audit, audit evidence. And so sufficient audit evidence is the quantity. Appropriate is the quality of that audit evidence. So the auditor has a lot of judgment as far as what types of audit evidence to obtain and um, how appropriate it is in the situation. And then also to determine um, how much of that audit, ed audit evidence is necessary um, given its structure and how it relates to the risk. So in order to um, reduce the audit risk, the auditor needs to use his professional judgment to obtain the enough and of the right type of audit evidence. And so sec uh, AUC section 500 goes into more detail about audit evidence. And so all of these 
um, obtaining this audit evidence is um, with the goal of reducing um, audit risk to an acceptably low level. So what is audit risk? Um, it's the risk that the auditor expresses an inappropriate opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. So it's the risk that we say the uh, financial statements aren't misstated while they are. Now the opposite of that is usually not a big risk, for instance, that we say the, um, the financial statements are materially misstated when they really aren't. Um, that's usually not the biggest risk here um, and usually not taken into concern. But So this audit risk is primarily a function of the risk of material misstatement and the detection risk. And so detection risk is the risk that procedures designed and performed by the auditor do not detect a material misstatement. So the auditor needs to make sure to design and perform the procedures that uh, limit the detection risk. So he should um, design procedures that are appropriate and sufficient. And so as an example, um, the risk of material misstatement should have an inverse relationship to detection risk. So if the risk of material misstatement is extremely high, then we need to design audit procedures um, with a low detection risk. So maybe more appropriate procedures or narrowed in procedures to redu reduce the risk of material misstatement, or rather the audit risk. And so sections 300 and 330 uh, provide some more details about the design of audit procedures to reduce the detection risk. And so now all of this um, discussion was with the purpose to find reasonable assurance that the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement. And as we discussed before, we can't find absolute assurance. And that's because there are inherent limitations of the audit. And so that results in our um, evidence and conclusions um, being persuasive rather than conclusive. And so what are some of those inherent limitations? So the first category of inherent limitations might be um, the financial reporting framework and the financial statements. Uh, for instance, maybe some of the um, accounting standards or um, the nature of the account require really subjective decisions about the related accounting and determination of the account balances or disclosures. And that could be from maybe very uh, uncertain estimates have to be made. And so there's really no way to predict how the future might pan out, but uh, GAS requires the auditor to obtain evidence and um, have a reasonable basis to be comfortable that the estimates are uh, reasonable. And so another category of limitations might be the inherent limitations of the audit itself and its procedures. For example, um, the auditor can't force the company to or its management to provide all of the information necessary. For instance, uh, they may withhold information um, that would be useful or that might um, determine a misstatement or um, there may be fraud going in, going on within the company. And um, also, since the engagement is not a formal investigation into the entity, they're really not forced to give you um, all of the information that you might need. And the final lim limitation might be the timeliness of the audit and uh, the cost and benefits of how much work to perform. And so since the audit needs to be performed within a reasonable amount of time after um, the year end of the company, um, due to as time goes forward, um, the information becomes less and less relevant. And so there needs to be a balance struck between the timing of the usefulness of the information as well as enough time for the financial statement to be as accurate as possible. And that's a tough balance to make. And so that's why the auditor needs to plan um, the audit very effectively and to direct his procedures to the most important accounts and disclosures. Um, that way he maximizes the, uh, the benefit given the cost that he has um, for coming to his conclusions. And a few other limitations that are, are um, different categories might be very difficult for um, the auditor to detect and that's because he may not have all the information or um, it may depend on events that, that happen in the future. And so some examples of those might be fraud occurring at the company or related party um, transactions that are going on that the auditor is unaware of, uh, non-compliance with laws or regulations that the auditor is unaware of, or future events that might cause the entity to cease to continue as a going concern. And so different sections um, within the AUC provide advice and standards on how to um, reduce those types of risks. And so although there are inherent limitations to performing the audit, um, it's, that's not a good excuse for the auditor to not um, perform appropriate procedures um, in the circumstances of the information that he has. And so whether or not the auditor has performed um, the audit in accordance with all the, the rules um, and standards of GAS is dependent on the audit procedures performed in the circumstances, the sufficiency and appropriateness of the audit evidence obtained, and the suitability of the auditor's report um, based on the evaluation of that evidence.